Endocrinology of the Male and Spermatogenesis Before spermatozoa can be produced, certain endocrine requirements must be met. First, adequate secretion of GnRH from the hypothalamus. Second is the FSH and LH secretion from the anterior lobe of the pituitary and secretion of gonadal steroids, the testosterone and estradiol. In this figure is the schematic representation of the hypothalamic pituitary axis and the hormonal feedback system. The secretion of hypothalamic gonadotropin releasing hormone or GnRH stimulates production of luteinizing hormone LH and follicle stimulating hormone FSH by the pituitary. LH is transported in the bloodstream to the testis where it stimulates Leydig cells to produce testosterone. These can act as an androgen via interaction with androgen receptors, but can also be aromatized to produce estrogens. The testes, in turn, feed back on the hypothalamus and the pituitary via testosterone and inhibit secretion. In a negative feedback loop, to limit GnRH and gonadotropin production. Both androgens and FSH act on receptors within the supporting somatic cells, the Sertoli cells, to stimulate various functions needed for optimal sperm production. Spermatogenesis takes place entirely with the seminiferous tubules and consists of all cell divisions and morphologic changes that occur to developing germ cells. So as we can see, the wall of the seminiferous tubules contains numerous types of cells and one of them are the primary germ cells. The primary germ cells transform through various stages of development and finally form immature sperms known as spermatids. Here's an illustration of spermatogenesis. The process of spermatogenesis can be subdivided into three phases. Number 1. Proliferation phase. It consists of all mitotic divisions of spermatogonia. Several generations of a spermatogonia undergo mitotic divisions, generating a large number of B spermatogonia. Stem cell renewal, an important part of proliferation phase. Number 2. Meiotic phase. It begins with primary spermatocytes. It is where the DNA replication occurs and the production of haploid spermatids. 3. Differentiation phase. No further cell divisions take place. It is commonly being referred to as spermiogenesis. A spherical undifferentiated spermatid undergoes a remarkable transformation. Proliferation phase. The spermatogonia is the most primitive cells encountered in the seminiferous epithelium. These specialized diploid 2 and chromosomal content cells are located in the basal compartment of the seminiferous epithelium. It undergoes several mitotic divisions, with the last division resulting in primary spermatocytes. There are three types of spermatogonia. A spermatogonia, 1 spermatogonia the intermediate, and B spermatogonia. A spermatogonia undergo several mitotic divisions in which they progress mitotically from A1 through A4. Once the baseline number of spermatogonia is established after puberty, the mitotic component proceeds to provide precursor cells and initiate the process of differentiation and maturation. Here is an illustration of proliferation phase, in which number of divisions depends on species. Meiotic phase The meiotic phase involves primary spermatocytes until spermatids are formed. During this process, chromosome pairing, crossover, and genetic exchange take place until a new genome is determined. Meiosis consists of two successive divisions to yield four haploid spermatids 
from one diploid primary spermatocyte. Secondary spermatocytes. After the first meiotic division, the reduction division, each daughter cell contains one partner of the homologous chromosome pair, and they are called secondary spermatocytes, also written as 2N. Meiotic phase is characterized by PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Prophase of the first meiotic division ensures genetic heterogeneity and that each secondary spermatocyte and subsequently each spermatid will be genetically unique. At the end of telophase, the spermatids do not separate completely but remain interconnected by fine bridges for synchronous development. These spermatids are haploid with 22X or 22Y chromosome and undergo complete differentiation, morphogenesis known as spermiogenesis. In this presentation, we can see spermatogonia, which undergoes meiosis 1 and becomes the primary spermatocyte, then undergoes meiosis 2, the secondary spermatocytes, then the secondary spermatocytes become spermatids during meiosis 2 and then spermatids become spermatozoa during the differentiation phase. The differentiation phase The role of a spermatozoon is to deliver the male's genetic material to an oocyte during fertilization. To form cells that are capable of fertilization, spherical spermatids undergo a series of changes in which the nucleus becomes highly condensed. The acrosome is formed and the cell becomes potentially motile. Motility is the ability to swim, which requires the development of a flagellum and a metabolic power plant known as the mitochondrial helix. Differentiation phases have four phases, Golgi, Cap, Acrosomal, and Maturation. In this figure, we can see the Golgi phase of spermatid differentiation. Letter A, the newly formed spermatid is almost perfectly spherical and has a well-developed Golgi apparatus. Letter B, small vesicles of the Golgi fuse, giving rise to larger secretory granules called proacrosomic granules. The centrioles then start to migrate to a position beneath the nucleus that is opposite the acrosomic vesicle. In letter C, vesicle fusion continues until a large acrosomic vesicle is formed containing a dense acrosomic granule. The proximal centriole or the PC gives rise to the attachment point of the tail. The distal centriole or DC gives rise to the developing axonym which is the central portion of the tail inside the cytoplasm of the spermatid. Another figure is the cap phase. In letter A, the Golgi migrates toward the caudal part of the cell. The distal centriole or DC forms the axonym or flagellum that projects away from the nucleus toward the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. Letter B. The acrosomic vesicle flattens and begins to form a distinct cap consisting of an outer acrosomal membrane, an inner acrosomal membrane, and the acrosomal contents, which is the enzymes. The third figure is the acrosomal phase. In letter A, the spermatid nucleus begins to elongate and the acrosome eventually covers the majority of the anterior nucleus. The manchet forms in the region of the half caudal of the nucleus and extends down toward the developing flagellum. Letter B, the neck and the annulus are formed, and the later will become the juncture between the middle piece and the principal piece. Notice that all components of the developing spermatid are completely surrounded by a plasma membrane. The letter M there stands for mitochondria. The fourth phase, the maturation phase. In this figure, mitochondria form a spiral assembly around the flagellum that defines the middle piece. The postnuclear cap is formed from the manchet microtubules. The annulus forms the juncture between the middle piece and the principal piece. This figure shows the anatomy of a spermatozoa, which consists the head, mid piece, principal piece, and end piece. 
The acrosome plasma membrane nucleus are located in the head. The centriole and mitochondria in the mid piece and axial filament or the axonym in the principal piece. Spermiation. A mature spermatid frees itself from the Sertoli cell and enters the lumen of the tubule as a spermatozoan in a process. Sertoli cells actively participate in spermiation, which may also involve the actual movement of the cells as the spermatids advance toward the lumen of the seminiferous tubules. The sperms then spend a few days in the epididymis and gain motility. The motile sperms are thus capable of fertilization. The mature spermatids close their intracellular bridges, disconnect their contact with the germinal epithelium, and become free cells called spermatozoa. This figure illustrates the, the process of spermatogenesis. In proliferation phase, the first phase, the spermatogonia or A1 undergoes mitotic division, which becomes spermatogonia A2, then undergoes again mitotic division. Spermatogonia A2 then becomes spermatogonia A3. Mitotic division continues until spermatogonia becomes spermatogonia B. After proliferation phase, we have the meiosis phase, which then the primary spermatocytes become secondary spermatocytes by the process of meiosis 1. Secondary spermatocytes undergo meiosis II and become spermatids, and this is now under the differentiation phase. Spermatids then become the spermatozoa. 